Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of The Killings at Kingfisher Hill by Sophie Hanna, which is a new Hercule Poirot mystery officially authorised by the Agatha Christie estate. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... You sat in the seat you should never have sat in. Now here comes a poker to batter your hat in. Hercule Poirot has been invited to the exclusive Kingfisher Hill estate to help defend someone who has already confessed to murdering Frank Devonport. To get there, he must endure a journey by coach, which is interrupted by a woman who is convinced that another death is imminent. Later, a body is discovered with a macabre note attached. Could this new murder and the incident on the coach be clues to who really killed Frank Devonport? And can Poirot solve the mystery in time to save an innocent person from the gallows? Let's find out. So, towards the beginning we get uh, an interruption. Someone goes, do you see that young woman over there? What on earth is wrong with her? Perhaps her mother dropped her hard on her head when she was a baby. And that just stood out to me because my dad once sent Terry Pratchett an email saying he loved his books, but they're very strange. Was he ever dropped on his head by it when he was a baby? And Pratchett replied, no, but a baby was dropped on my head. Which is very good. Faro says, it is unwise to read while in motion. It makes for the bilious stomach. I always read while in motion. I love reading in cars and on buses and trains and things. And so we learn about um, basically one of the characters he stole from his parents and invested the money, basically paid them back and did this all without their knowledge and then used the excess to set up some schools. Um, so we get, there was plenty left over too and the thief and his friend used it to set up some excellent schools in which people are treated with respect as if they are proper people who matter. That ought to happen in ordinary schools but rarely does. Yeah, true. Especially in my school. And so we get this conversation with between Poirot and his mate, whose name I now long, no longer can remember. I hope our collector arrives soon, I said. A person can only take so much exposure to this weather before hypothermia sets in. Console yourself with the knowledge that it is worse for me than for you, Monomy. My constitution was not designed for such conditions. You Englishmen enjoy the heroic freezing to death. That is quite untrue. Do not tell me that you have not heard of Robert Falcon Scott and his doomed voyage to the Antarctic. Was he not an Englishman? And, um... Cats from Cats and Camera has talked about that a lot. The guy was an idiot. He went, he took ponies instead of dogs, for example. And then somebody from the coach ends up at the place that they've gone to to investigate this murder. And it's all very suspicious. And we get this great thing. They call him, um, well, we get this. Uh, you will disregard Daisy's lies and you will leave my home immediately. Richard will drive you and your epicene lick spittle back to London. Richard, do as I ask at once. I want these two blackguards out of this house. And we get, the words epicene lickspittle, quite the most unpleasant thing anyone had ever called me, echoed in my head as I waited for Poirot to begin his questioning of our driver. I just thought that was a very amusing little thing to call somebody. We get a reference to Romeo and Juliet. I had studied it at school and its lessons had stayed with me. Pursue your romantic urges with no thought for what society will allow and there is a good chance that you will end up in a disadvantageous situation. And Poirot, it's interesting, he says, there's a moment in each case uh, when suddenly before the mystery is solved, he sees enough of the picture to know for sure that it will be solved. And in that uh, moment, he experiences the same emotions he would as if he'd seen the answer. But it's also that that then kind of forces him to keep hunting down the true solution. They go off to Holloway Prison. He says, I have visited many in the course of my work for Scotland Yard and have found none to be pleasant, but Holloway is the worst of all. I have never been able to tolerate the suffering of women very easily. And within those walls, there is little else to be found. And we get some casual uh, reference to like spousal abuse. So um, somebody goes, stop it, stop it right now or I won't be held responsible for what I do to you later. So there's a guy who names his dogs Pound and Sterling after the Great British Currency, which I thought was amusing. And we have a character here, she goes, he was with me, Monsieur Poirot, and you might think I would say that even if it were untrue, but I would not. People need to face the consequences of their actions, whether one is related to them by blood or not. Percy Slemley, if you ever break the law, I shall report you straight to the police, nephew or no nephew. And my mum always said that to me, she was like, if I ever catch you breaking the law, I'm going to tell the police. And then we have a doctor here, um, who is anti-abortion. Um, Oliver's narrative became rather oblique at that point, but he did say that the Harley Street doctor who was attending to his dying father would not help them, though he easily could have. Oliver called him a hateful man in one breath, then with the next he was denouncing his own appalling behaviour and praising the doctor's wisdom and judgement. Good old doctor, say I, if he would not help Oliver and his lady friend to get rid of a baby. Doctors are supposed to save lives, not end them when they've barely begun. To be fair, I'm not sure whether he was actually talking about abortion or getting rid of a newborn child, which is obviously a different thing. But anyway, The Killings at Kingfisher Hill by Sophie Hanna. I did enjoy it. I know Charles Heathcote isn't so much a fan of these, but I, I did enjoy the, uh, this book. Um, if, it didn't feel like Christie, but it felt close enough. Um, 
especially because I've read, I think it was a Charles Osborne one, which didn't feel like Christie at all. Um, and this like uses a lot of the same tropes and things, and yeah, it was a decent enough read. It, the actual solution was kind of convoluted, so I don't know if anybody would actually guess that. I mean, well done to you if you did. I'm not one of those readers who tries to do that. I just sort of read and I'm happy to let the author take me along at their own speed, you know. Um, but yes, I did enjoy it. I gave The Killings at Kingfisher Hill by Sophie Hanna a strong 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it. That's what I made of The Killings at Kingfisher Hill by Sophie Hanna. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.